Hi, I'm Brie, co-founder of Eldest Kitchen Cooking and Grilling Sauces, and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we are going to be making a one pan chicken pot pie that is sure to make everyone in your family happy and excited for dinner. So let's get started. So over here, I have a big pan. This would be considered a paella pan. And it's fabulous, like not only can you do paella in this pan, but as you'll see this evening, I am going to be making a one dish chicken pot pie in it. So while this heats up here, I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of butter. So the reason I'm using a paella pan instead of another type is because this paella pan is huge, and once I get the filling made inside, I'm gonna put the crust on top for our chicken pot pie, and it's gonna be the perfect size. This butter is just melting here, and these pans are beautiful and just so vibrant. Love this pan, too, because it does work on the barbecue, and you know, how nice is that, that I can cook inside, I can cook outside. Oh my gosh, it's everywhere. So you guys, let's get started adding to this butter. To this butter, we are going to add in one shallot that I diced. Uh, to me, I think that they are kind of a cross between an onion and garlic, and they just have such a mellow flavor. It's not overpowering. Okay, so we have this shallot in here and we just want to cook it up a little bit. You do not want it to brown. And to that, we are adding a half cup of diced celery. And this is just gonna get us started here. And then we are gonna add in a cup and a half of diced carrots. I will cut them up just, you know, you wanna keep the cuts very uniform so that they cook evenly. So we just cut that up there and let's go ahead and season with some salt. And this is just some kosher salt that is coarse. And we do not have to worry about cooking these carrots so that they're soft because we're gonna put this an entire pan in a 350 degree oven after we put the pie crust on top. Add in some fresh black pepper. There we go. And we'll be seasoning along the way. So we are just gonna let this cook up a little bit. While this cooks, I'm gonna grab my chicken and we are gonna dice it up. And I do have this cooking over medium heat. And I am cutting up some chicken tenders into good size cubes. You can use uh, whatever boneless piece of chicken you have on hand. Make sure it's about one pound. Usually when I'm cooking chicken, I always make sure that I have about a pound to a pound and a half. And since this is going in a chicken pot pie with a bunch of other yummy ingredients, I am just using a pound because this pot pie will definitely uh, fill you up. So you guys, we are just cubing this up. I'm gonna wash my hands and I'll be back with you in a second. All right, you guys, I'm back. Cutting board is clean and put away. My hands are clean. And let's get this chicken cooking. We just let these veggies just kind of cook on low. We don't have to cook them fully, and that's so fabulous. But this chicken, this chicken, I will be cooking all the way. And we want chicken to reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees, just to make sure it's safe. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned Elda's Kitchen Cooking and Grilling Sauces, and that I was the co-founder. So along with my father, Aldo, we created a line of cooking and grilling sauces that are named after my Italian grandmother, Elda. Elda, as, and I referred to her as Nani, 
was such a fabulous cook and could take the simplest recipe and make it fantastic. And Elda's Kitchen is here to help the everyday home cook bring a little bit of that 1950s kitchen culture back into your home. Now, our garlic and herb cooking and grilling sauce is fabulous. It stands alone on its own, but you can also add to it to take it up to that next level. While I have this chicken in here, I am just going to salt this chicken. Just very little, you know, you just want like a pinch of salt. You definitely want to layer in your flavors here. Salt and pepper should go just kind of as you are cooking the dish. You know, I added in all the veggies and then I salt and pepper them. And now we are gonna add in the Elvis Kitchen Garlic and Herb Cooking and Grilling Sauce. So this is just, it's such a fabulous sauce, you guys. I just can't say that enough. It really is a very mellow sauce that is a crowd pleaser. So we are adding in about one third of the bottle. I even add garlic and herb to my pie crust when I am making a chicken pot pie. I do have a fabulous pie crust recipe. It is on my personal blog, In the Kitchen with Brie. There I share recipes that have Elda's kitchen in it, but also some recipes that just remind me of Elda herself. So we are just letting that chicken cook. While this chicken cooks, I'm gonna go gather up some more ingredients. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, I am back. And we are just letting this chicken cook up. It is nearly done and I'm gonna transfer it over to a small oval casserole dish. So I am back and in our paella pan here, we are gonna go ahead and add in some butter because we are going to be making a delicious light roux. And now we are going to sprinkle in some flour. To that, we want to add in some heavy whipping cream. So now let's add this chicken back in. I'll be back in a jiffy. And we are going to add in just about a cup of chicken stock. So this is really where you're going to eyeball it and just make sure that you have enough liquid in here so that it does not dry out when you put it in the oven. We put in just about a cup. I'm going to put in just a little bit more there. There we go. And I have two cups of russet potatoes that I have diced up. Please make sure these cuts are even just because uh, they are potatoes. So you want them to all cook nice and evenly. And the reason I did put these in last is because they will continue to cook in the oven. And they won't get too mushy either. So that's why they went in last is because I don't want super mushy potatoes. All right, you guys, I am back and I have floured my pastry board. So here is my pie crust. Now, normally this right here would be into two separate rounds both saran wrapped individually. But because this pan is as large as it is, I just made one round so that we make sure to have enough and a lovely crust for this pan right here. This has been in the fridge for probably a couple hours here and I am just going to just sprinkle a little flour on top, rub it over there, and we are just gonna keep working this dough until we have a round that is big enough for that pie pan. I got the pie crust into somewhat of a round shape, but it's definitely big enough for this pan here. So before I put that on, I am going to just make sure that it's nice, even layer and that you know, the chicken is in there so that everyone 
gets a little bit of chicken in each bite or each serving has chicken, I should say. So there we go. Now, you guys are probably looking at this going, that is gigantic. How do we get it on to the paella pan? Well, what we do is we will, actually first we're gonna flour just a tiny bit. You know, honestly, I will tell you that uh, having a little more flour in this dish will just sturdy up that sauce just a little bit. All right, you guys, so let's get this pie crust on the move. And it is actually a super, super sturdy crust that um, I could have totally just picked it up and put it on there. So we are just going to take it. So you see it's hanging over the edge, right? I am going to just put a towel down this pie crust recipe is delicious because it has so much butter in it. So I'm going to take it and I am just going to tuck in everything around the edge and then we'll go through and we'll make a pretty little pattern there. Um, I love extra crust on my uh, chicken pot pies. Love it so much. So like if there's an opportunity to fold in and you know you like extra crust it's awesome when you get that piece that has extra around the edge so we are just folding that in there and now let you can leave it like this absolutely it's beautiful it's going to turn out beautifully like this or you can do um, a designer on the edge so what I like to do is I like to take two fingers like that and just kind of pinch and up. And then see, I'm just, so like right here, this finger here, this finger is gonna go into that finger hole. There we go. Edge and up. One, two, up. One, two. I think pies are fun. Uh, I think that pie does not get the credit all the time, but it should, because they are just fun to make and they're fun to eat. So there we go. Now you can egg wash this. Sometimes I will egg wash it, but today I'm just gonna brush it with some heavy whipping cream. And it's gonna give you that same effect that you want with an egg wash. And then I'm not cracking an egg and wasting it. If I have a lot of pies to do, I will go ahead and um, crack an egg and do an egg wash. But just please make sure to get all those sides there. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're not gonna notice if you, as I like to call it, if you painted it perfectly with an egg wash or with heavy cream, uh, we're just gonna know how delicious it tastes. So just continuing to brush trying not to get puddles, but you know that's so hard because we do have uh, dips in the crust from the filling. So this chicken pot pie right here is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for 60 minutes. I'll see you as soon as it's done. You definitely want your pot pie to rest for at least 20 minutes before cutting into it and serving. I have some fresh thyme from my garden that I am going to just lay on top. So there we are. We have our Elda's Kitchen garlic and herb chicken pot pie in one pan, I might say. Who doesn't love these one pan meals? So thank you again for joining me today and welcome to In the Kitchen with Brie. Bye-bye.